Hi, I'm Justin Danhoff, Head of Corporate Governance here at Strive Asset Management. Today, I want to talk to you about how Strive is going to vote at the upcoming shareholder meeting of Disney. Disney, of course, is one of the most famous companies in the United States of America, but boy, do they have issues when it comes to systemic risk that they aren't paying attention to. So first, the basics. There are three shareholder proposals up for consideration. Today, I wanna to talk to you about one that really focuses in on risk to shareholders. We're also gonna go through a couple of board member votes and some management proposals as well. So let's take a closer look at how Strive voted on behalf of our clients on two of Disney's board members. The first that we wanna discuss is Chairman Mark Parker. Who is Mark Parker? Well, from 2006 until 2020, he served as the CEO of Nike. What did Nike do under his leadership? Well, infamously, in 2019, they pulled a tribute shoe to Betsy Ross, the seamstress who sewed the original American flag. Why did they do that? Well, because Colin Kaepernick told them to, because in his view, Betsy Ross and everyone that lived in that generation was a racist. What else did Nike do under Mark Parker's so-called leadership? Well, they got involved in a state battle in North Carolina over a so-called bathroom bill. What was Nike's position on this legislation? Well, they wanted grown men to be able to use the same restrooms and changing rooms as young girls. Do you think that drives shareholder value? No. And so at Strive, we voted against Mark Parker on the ballot of Disney. What Disney ballot would be complete if we didn't talk about Strive's vote against CEO Bob Iger? Bob Iger retired a couple years ago from Disney and handpicked his successor, a gentleman by the name of Bob Chapik. Well, how did that work out for Disney? Not so great. Chapik decided that he was going to get involved in a parental rights bill in the state of Florida. And let's just say, I think we all know he lost to Governor DeSantis in that battle. And not only did he lose that battle, he lost his seat as the CEO of Disney and the board brought Bob Iger back in to replace him. The comical part of that is that Iger handpicked Chapik to be his successor and he's brought back in to handpick his next successor. So let's look at what happened under Iger's initial leadership of Disney. Well, we all know that Disney owns ABC and ESPN and under his leadership, Sports Center turned into a actual news organization related to sports and sports programming, and it became Woke Center, where if you turn it on today, all you get is political rambling rather than sports entertainment. At ABC News, again, let's look at what happened under Bob Iger. We have people like Joy Behar on programs like The View saying that our vice president at the time, Mike Pence, was mentally ill because he prays to God? That's crazy, but that's the sort of crazy that Bob Iger brings to the business world. He doesn't bring acumen, he brings politicization. And so for that reason, on behalf of our clients, Strive voted against Bob Iger on Disney's board. So an interesting shareholder proposal on Disney's ballot that Strive voted in favor of on behalf of our clients relates to Disney's connection with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. There is perhaps no American company that has such an allegiance to the CCP, so much so that when they filmed Mulan, they actually thanked the Chinese Communist Party in the credits. Where did they film Mulan? In the Zhejiang province. What happens there? Well, the Chinese Communist Party enslaves a minority Muslim population called the Uyghurs. They have forced sterilization of their women because they are trying to drive out their population. And Disney thanked them for the pleasure of filming in this location. Disney has contractual relationships with the CCP where in fact they actually own more of Disney Shanghai than Disney owns. So think about the risk that that causes for shareholders. What happens, let's say, if China invades Taiwan? Or if China decides, guess what? We now own all of Disney Shanghai. That's gonna be a big hit to shareholders. So of course you would think Disney explains this to their investors in things like their 10K filings. You'd be wrong. Disney doesn't. They barely mention China at all when it comes to the material risks to investors. And so for this reason, Strive voted on behalf of our clients in favor of this proposal because there is a lack of transparency and accountability and Strive 
is going to hold Disney accountable. Strive also took a look at and considered the executive compensation package at Disney. At almost every annual meeting, there is a vote that's called Say on Pay. That is an advisory vote that shareholders get to give a thumbs up or thumbs down to the compensation of the named executive officers of a company. At Disney, we gave a big thumbs down. Why does Strive do that on behalf of our clients? If you look at the compensation discussion and analysis, the CD&A in the proxy statement of Disney, they explain that the number one non-financial factor that they consider in paying their executive officers is diversity, equity, and inclusion. They don't hide it. So they're incentivizing their executives based on arbitrary metrics of hiring and promotion based on what people look like not their value add to the company, not their accretion of shareholder value. It is what they look like, their skin color and their gender. That is not the way to run a business. So Stride voted against the executive compensation package for all executives at Disney. And we did so unapologetically. Thanks today for coming and listening to how Stride voted on behalf of our clients on the Disney shareholder meeting for 2023.